And good morning, or I'm not sure if I should say Kapla. Um, this is the first side of, uh, or first part of a video where I'm going over to the dark side, and I'll be discussing KDF ships. Now, I freely admit I am not a KDF ship expert. Uh, this character was set up as a challenge from a very good fleet mate who just said that I couldn't get to tier 5 on a KDF Klingon character so I accepted the challenge and he now owes me several kegs of vintage blood wine and for those that know our fleet, the Alliance Central Command, I'm sure Pathfinder is now fully aware that he owes me several kegs of blood wine so I shall be collecting those or else now, as said, this is uh, the first of a set on the Fleet Sumra vessel. I hope I've pronounced that right. Um, this is a KDF tactical character, and I am not very skilled with better praise. I'm still finding my feet with them currently, but I do like the Raptors, and this is the Fleet Raptor, and this is a phenomenally good vessel. I'm actually very, very impressed with it. It does very well, it does a fantastic amount of damage. Now this is what will be my current build and this is how I've set it up. It's not the be one end all, this is not how you have to have your specs, this is just how I've got mine set up. And I will be doing the Birds of Prey as well, I'm going to show you what mine is, although it's a very fresh ship out of the shipyard, it's still being set up. And at the moment I'm actually considering changing the bridge officer setup on this ship, but I haven't decided yet. Now this build was actually set up for the Temporal Destroyer, this is what I wanted the type of build to be on my Temporal Destroyer for this character, but I haven't got around to picking up enough Lobby Crystals to pick up the Klingon version of the Temporal Destroyer, so at the moment the Fleet Somra is a standing, and I have to admit I'm going to have trouble getting myself out of the Fleet Somra because I've actually been very very impressed with it, it's done very well, uh, very durable, does soak up a lot of damage compared to BOPs, which is not surprising because that, that Birds of Prey are set up as hit and run. That's what you've got to remember. The Raptors are, in my view, uh, got more hull than a Bird of Prey. They can soak up a bit more damage. They sacrifice a little bit of offensive power, but it's very negligible and it's easily compensated for. So, without further ado, I suppose we better start. Um, at the moment, you're probably looking at my ship and it, you think it might be doing the Death Star run because it's stuck somewhere between an up and down floor space. If I just rotate the ship around, she's actually at the Klingon shipyard in Kronos, and I've got her parked at the moment in the entrance to one that, what I assume is the entrance to one of the docking bays. So, I couldn't resist parking the ship there just for sheer novelty value. Uh, but I might actually park the ship more there when I'm docked. So, yeah, let's get started and we'll discuss what uh, consoles and bits I'm using. This is the first part, as I said, and in the first part of my videos, if you're used to them, I usually discuss the consoles, etc. at the moment. So, let's get started. Now, this ship revolves around temporal warfare at the moment, and as such, that's kind of how this ship is spec'd out. Now, I'm actually going to be changing my consoles around a little bit. Um, I'm actually going to swap over my engineering consoles because I'm not 100% happy with this but I'll show you what I'm currently running and you'll see what I'm going to change it to soon. So yeah, with that first two, let's get our butts and gear. So at the moment, I see this is a fleet summer vessel and this build was actually set up around temporal warfare and as such has changed a little bit. And um, for those that are familiar with Wells class, you'll probably understand some of why I've picked what I've picked. Uh, but if you've not, you'll get a familiarity with it shortly. Now, this one is pretty much for taking out the Borg and taking out other things as well. Um, one of the few things that might seem a little bit odd is on this ship, I'm actually using the full space three part Borg set. Now, it used to be a four part, it's now three, unfortunately, um, but it still works really, really well. And yeah, so here we go. So console-wise, or weapon-wise, we'll discuss the weapons first. I'm running two heavy, dual heavy, sorry, cannons up forward. They're purple Mark 11s. They've got accuracy, crit D, and damage. So there's an increase to the damage output. There's a very good crit on this. It's a plus 50 crit severity and a 10% accuracy. Now, I favour accuracy, that's just a personal preference, uh, especially for PvP. In PvE, it probably isn't, to be honest, as useful. You might want to consider having like more crit D, for example, but I've always liked having accuracy, it just gives me a bonus. So I've got two of these slotted up front. So, 
dual heavies are going to upset anyone's day and it very much upsets the ball quite frequently and then from cannons I'm just going to go on to turrets and I've got two turrets slotted with purple again mark 11s and they're actually crit and damage so these ones are doing a plus 40 crit severity bonus and a 10 accuracy and a bit more damage and then mix this up with the bridge officer abilities like rapid fire this really upsets someone's day and then the next forge set of weapons I've got the chronoton dual beam away which is an anti-proton damage and that gives you the plus 40 critical severity now those that have watched my wells class videos also know that you also get a two and a half percent chance to reduce the flight speed and turn rate of a target that means if you reduce their flight speed you're going to reduce their defense value which means they're going to get pummeled more so very useful that one and then up forward i've got a chronoton torpedo launcher which has come from our fleet store for the our klingon half of our fleet so we've got a fed and a kdf side and it's not uncommon for them to run dual operations against the borg although they're not obviously at peace yet and this is the Advanced Chronoton Torpedo Launcher, this is the Mark 12 Purple with 3 damage, at modifier and 1 accuracy. And I'll explain the Temporal Warfare suite again for those that haven't seen the Wells class, but um, getting some pretty decent damage out of those torpedoes. Now last but by certainly no means least, the Aft Weapons Array uh, last slot, as Raptors have 4-3 combination on the 4 forward and 3 aft. You get the Temporal Disruption device, which is basically the equivalent as a, a tricobalt device, and when the target gets hit by it, it's a 100% chance to reduce their flight speed and turn rate speed by 33%, so you're reducing their defense values again. As I said, this thing is really, really slow weapon, and it is a destructible weapon as well, so be careful how you launch it. I've put it in the aft slot, it's much more useful, and I've said before in my Wells class video, run over the target, drop this on them like a mine, and yeah, it's going to upset their day. Now on this ship, I don't use torpedo spread, I actually use high yield 3, which makes a temporal destruction device very, very nasty, but again, you've got to launch it on top of the target, so bear that in mind, it's a bit like a mine, drop it on someone's lap, rather than fire it off too far away, um, so yeah, bear that in mind. Now the Deflector Impulse and Shields are the Assimilated Array, I got these before Season 7 and as such we've got the full set here and I've found for this particular ship it's actually working very useful I know a lot of people will sometimes slate having the three part Borg set um, I've actually found it really useful on this particular ship I probably wouldn't mount it on a Bird of Prey although it's tempting for some of the set bonuses you get with it um, but I think the Klingon Honor Guard set I think is going to be better with the Bird of Prey, although at the moment mine's running the EJS set because I haven't ground that time to grind for the Honor Guard set, but um, yeah, it doesn't do too bad, but on this Raptor it actually does, does phenomenally well. Um, again, for those that aren't familiar or have forgotten, the Deflector Array gives you a plus 5 bonus to your power auxiliary settings. It gives you the plus 24.42 Starship Structure Integrity, 16.2 uh, plus to your inertial dampeners and graviton generators. Now this character is actually spec for graviton, and for those of you who don't remember, graviton ability affects tractor beams and it affects the effectiveness of chronoton torpedoes. So if you're only spec in torpedo damage, you're not getting the full effect out of chron chronoton torpedoes. If you want to get the most out of a chronoton torpedo, you've got to be spec in graviton. If you're not spec in it, that's no big deal. You can use consoles to compensate it, and like the Borg set, for example, give you bonus to gravitons. But if you really want to make a chronoton torpedo very effective, then you really need to be spec in graviton as well. So just a useful bit of information to bear that in mind. Now in the impulse engines, again purple mark 12, uh, mark 11 sorry, you get a plus on the engine, you get a plus 5 to your engine power setting, you get a plus 18.3 to your flight speed and a plus 0.84 to your flight turn as well. Something also to bear in mind is they're really useful in sector space, you've got the space trans warp ability which is affected by driver coil but this character is not expecting driver coil but again basically you're moving faster in sector space and believe you me after when I first went into game and beta and season 1 and onwards man was it slow to get around in sector space in those days now it's much more easy you can transwarp places if you've got diplomacy skills or even on the missions now you can just transwarp to most mission locations now not like when I first started you, you, you literally had to fly there 
you, you used to be set a course, go make a sandwich and a cup of coffee or get a beer out of the fridge, come back and you might have actually just reached your destination. Believe me, that's not a lie, but I've done that. Mm. Now the shields again, disseminated regenerative shields, purple mark 11s, you again get a plus 5 to your shield power settings. Uh, the shields for the regenerative arrays are not the highest on this particular build. 3879 shield capacity with 10% bleed through, so whenever your shields get hit, 10% of that is going to get straight through onto your hull. The one thing to bear in mind is that the regenerative array also has the fastest regeneration rate. So 222.9 shield regeneration of six seconds, six seconds on my power level. <coughs> Excuse me. And also you get a reduction to plasma damage to shields by 15%. On the top of my head, I think you get 20% on the Mako shields. Um, but it's still a, re a relatively good reduction to plasma if you're getting hit by plasma. So Borg and Romulans and Remans, you're still going to get a reduction to their effectiveness in the weapons. Now the other thing to bear in mind, if you run three-party, unfortunately it no longer is a four-part for those that don't have forgotten, is there are two set bonuses that you get with this. The, if you get two parts of it, you get the Autonomous Regeneration Sequencer, which is a passive ability, which is a plus 0.35 to your health regeneration, basically your ship, and then a plus 10 to your Starship Hull Repair. But it also, basically, when you receive all damage, there's a 2% chance of applying the Autonomous Regeneration Sequencer. And this ability is affected by Starship Hull Repair. And basically what this is, this is a passive automatically kicking off hull repair so it's kind of like having a second emergency power to structural integrity it's going to be running autonomously and it'll kick off and repair some of your hull now in this raptor it's proven really really effective and very useful and yeah it's just one that gives you a passive hull hill over time it's definitely worth having now the set part if you get three parts of this set now are that you get the multi regenerative shield rate, which used to be common when you ran the board deflector engines and then console. Of course, they well, they didn't exactly nerf it, but I suppose my bumper might consider it that, but really they just made the console a second part of the set, of a brand new set, because really most sets have always been three part, not four part sets, so it kind of knocked out the synergy of it all. But it's also upset quite a few people with builds along the way. Um, but yeah, this gives you the multi regenerative shield rate, which is when you're receiving more damage, there's a 10% chance of applying the multi regenerative shield rate. Which basically, if your shield face into a target falls below 20%, there's a 10% chance of applying this again passive shield heal, which is basically another immense powered shield or another version of the uh, for shield strength. So it increases your um, ability for your shields to recharge. Now, the Raptor, when I'm really up against it, and sometimes when I drew, draw a bit more egg rune than I intended, I'm actually quite grateful for this ability because it gets me out of trouble quite frequently. Uh, just now and again when I've been a bit careless. And last but certainly no means least, you also get the assimilated tractor beam. And what this does is it will uh, basically set the tractor beam and it causes the amount of kinetic damage but also drains power. It gives you a plus one all power settings after three seconds as well. It disables cloak as well. So it reduces the target's power. Now, when I do reach tier 5 Omega on this character, I'm actually going to drop one of the turrets, I think. Although it might affect my DPS a little bit. And I'm going to pick up the Borg um, Cutting Beam, uh, which is one of the set pieces you can get. Uh, the reason for that is this tractor beam is also affected. Well, the, um, if a target's recently been hit by a Cutting Beam within the last 4 seconds, it causes an extra amount of kinetic damage and crew damage on that target. So I'm going to drop one aft turret and throw in the kinetic beam, uh, kinetic cutting beam, into the mix. If I do that, it will also then mean I get part of the two-part bonus to the new Omega, uh, the new um, adapted board technology set. I'm not going to run all three, but I'm certainly tempted to run all two. And if I run all two of these, so if I get two parts set, I get the Omega weapon amplification which is basically a 2.5% chance to self that applies the Omega Weapon Amplifier which gives a plus 10 to current weapon power, plus 5 to current weapon power resistance and plus 500 maximum weapon power resistance for 3 seconds so nothing to sneeze at, I'm going to find that quite useful. Okay, so yeah that's the space set, 
and devices I've got the aux batteries because I'm running emergency power to weapons on this particular build so I don't need weapon batteries and predominantly I'm using cannons and I use beam overload on this one selectively so only when I want it I use it. Cannons don't drain anywhere near as much power and then over in devices I've got the ever faithful subspace field modulator that gives you the plus to your damage resistance ratings um, it also gives you a plus 15 defense for 15 seconds as well so definitely worth having now the engineering consoles are where things may be changing now at the moment I've got the ablative armor slotted at the current moment in time and a neutronium alloy uh, for the resistance there the neutroniums are blue mark 11 and I've got a purple mark 11 in here now, I'm actually going to swap these round a little bit later I'm probably going to run a monotronium for kinetic resistance and then either ablative neutronium or the electro ceramic when I'm up against the Borg I just at this moment in time I've got these two slotted at the moment and because she's a Raptor I'm going to take any resistance and damage I'm going to take and then the last engineering console I got is a Takio kinetic converter which is the second part of the temporal warfare suite I've got the first part up here and this is the second part of it and obviously that's the third part of it there so actually it's technically the third but the way I've run it and this gives me a plus 22.9 to a flight turn rate so it makes the ship turn faster I get a 17.2 Star Trek Graviton generators bonus again so the more power I've got in Graviton the better my tractor beams and the better my chroniton torpedoes are going to be effective and then you also get the useful plus 0.76 critical chance and a plus 7.6 critical severity now mix this with the board console that's down here and for those that are most likely familiar with it you also get a critical chance of critical severity as well and at the moment on my attack I've got a bonus actually of 22.7 I've got a crit chance of 4.2 and a crit severity chance of 66.8 pretty good numbers in my opinion obviously they could be better I suppose people have different builds and then in the science abilities I've got the... oh yeah, did I cover everything? yep, I covered everything and then in science I've got the ever faithful field generator as a bird of prey or a raptor you don't necessarily get the best shields and then obviously if you're running the Borg set, you don't get the best shield hit points anyway, so I've got a field generator slotted that gives me a plus 17.5 to my maximum shield capacity. Because I'm running Borg shields, I want the shields to come up as quickly as possible, I'm running a shield emitter amplifier with a plus 13.1% shield regeneration rate, and basically at my current power levels, these ones don't tend not to change like my current builds. I fluctuate this works quite effectively. Currently got a shield regeneration rate of 350.9. So again, quite useful. Shield's gonna regenerate pretty damn quickly on this ship. And then last but not least, our embassy or the KDF side of our fleet have also made ambassador and I've got access to the new science Romulan consoles. Now this one has got a minus to threat, um, like those that may have seen my update to my Odyssey build. Um, basically this decreases my threat generation by 56.2, so basically I'm an escort, I don't want to be taking heavy fire where possible, so I'm going to generate as little threat as possible while still hammering a target, but sometimes you can't help it if you're doing massive spike DPS damage you're going to get attention sometimes, but hopefully there's an engineer on hand that's actually got decent threat control and is going to keep the aggro off you so very useful that one and then also you get the plus 28.1 to starship shield emitters so I get more hit point heals on transfer shield strength for shields as well as trip mercy power to shields but I've also got a 2.5% chance to restore plus 225.2 shields to each shield face in 10 seconds as well so it's a passive shield heal as well because I'm running regenerative shields I've opted to go for shields to help bring the shields up quicker because they're regenerative and hopefully the more if a facing shield goes down to a low level the automatic sequencer kicks in to repair the shields as well so it's trying to get the best out of the Borg technology there now I've got two blue Mark 11 anti-proton mag regulators to increase my anti-proton damage which are currently giving me 1571 for anti-proton damage with 1047.5 DPS you could get more DPS out of this build but I'm quite happy with that I've got a purple Mark 12 chroniton flux regulator which is giving me the plus 30 to my chroniton projectile weapons mix that with the set part of the um, 
Temporal Warfare Suite, so I get the Chronos and Synchronicity, I get a free Mark 11 just over Chronos and Weapon Projectile Damage console as well as part of the set part, two bonus. So it's almost like having five console slots here, where I've got two for my Chronotons and two for my Antiprotons, and then the War console. So, giving me at the moment, figure-wise, my Chronoton Torpedoes do 4,500 kinetic damage, which is on par for kinetic damage to the low-end Quantum Torpedoes side of things and Photon Torpedoes side of things. So, definitely worth having. And then last but no means least is the assimilated module, which I showed briefly a moment ago, which gives you the plus 0.92% critical chance, plus 9.2 crit severity, so both useful things to have on any build. You get a plus 5 to the weapon power settings, definitely worth having extra power to weapons, and then you get plus 5.1 starship hull repair, so I'll get a bonus to hull repair and a ton of secret so for example, so anything that uses hull repair is going to get a bit of a bonus out of that. And again, you get the extra plus 22.9 Starship Graviton Generators as well. So, definitely worth having this, in my opinion. Yeah, and I'm just getting bonus the input because I've also got the Tactical Genetic Converter slotted. So, yeah, that's the Fleet Summer Raptor, and that's how she's built. For those that aren't familiar, this is how she's set up. She's got four weapons for three aft. Obviously, by slot for deflector and Boston engine. She has three engineering, three science, and four attack, which makes her a very, very versatile Raptor. Um, it's just a versatile ship. You can run it in many different configurations. Whatever you pick is best, really. As you said, you might notice that I'm slowly phasing out the biofunction monitor beds. Um, that's because I'm, the duty officer I've got slotted in here. If you see my update to my Odyssey, you'll probably know what medical officer I've slotted. And yeah, this works pretty well. It's a very good ship. Um, this is one of the few ships I'm definitely not going to be alternating power setting wise because she does very well on the, on the use. On the Fed side, my power levels are fluctuating a bit more. I'm going to be improving the consoles. As I said, I'm going to start monotronium in there and pick up a cheap electroceramic hull armor as well because I, I didn't realize until recently that I actually had it a slightly wrong way round engineering console wise so really I want a console in there for good kinetic resistance against port torpedoes and then a decent resistance to plasma weapons so the electroceramic when I'm not facing Borgs when PVE then I'll maybe PVP I probably want to slot the ablative in so that's going to modify it now shortly but I just thought I'd show you what I've got so at least you get appreciation for it so yeah that's the build class for Fleet Sombra so I hope that helps you and um, I said there'll be two more parts to this series and look forward to seeing you in the next part. Thank you.